All right, what up guys? So week five recap. I just want to start it out right away and say if you are in the Austin area, Austin, Texas, and you have a place to work out or like somewhere near that area, please let me know. I'm in the middle of a steroid cycle and if you guys have a gym that's not closed down due to this coronavirus or you have a private gym or something, just by any off chance that any of my few viewers are in that area, I'll pay to work out. So. I'm in the middle of a steroid cycle and I have long esters and I was just upping my my volume and it was a really bad time to stop working out. Obviously there's a lot bigger things in the world than you know me or like working out. So I'm not gonna like complain but if you do have anything in the area, let me know. I'll I'll try to kick down some money or, or something, you know. So just hit me up if you do. Oh, one sec. Make sure my shit was recording. So, with that said, I'll just do week five recap real quick. Um, just started getting good. Um, my, my weight was dropping, my cut was going well. I dropped like three pounds this week. I think I weighed in around like 217. So, I dropped like three pounds. I was doing um, keto and uh, I added in Osterine. So, my strength started to go up, all my weight jumped up like pretty good, I was feeling good in the gym, and yeah, I'll do the physique update on the screen, uh, I'll just try to make that quick, but yeah, I was looking a little leaner, I was like definitely a lot more vascular, and yeah, my strength was starting to, like I feel like the cycle was starting to kick in, and uh, you know, now I can't work out, but it's not that big of a deal, uh, I'll try to make something work, but yeah, I'll do the physique, you know, started looking good, whatever, um, but the, the main reason I want to do this video is the lab work came in. Um, I'm not going to go over all the side effects like I usually do because it was uh, pretty similar to the week before with like mental and, and my sex drive and all that. Everything was good. Scan, everything was good. I was all good. Just look at the last week. I kind of tried to summarize what EQ was like by itself. So. I got this lab work in and this is really, I'm glad I got it in before I had to, you know, to stop all this and, and all this shit happened, but I got my lab work in and interesting stuff. So basically, I'll put it on the screen also, but I only got three things tested because I'm only four weeks in and uh, when I got this done. And keep in mind, when I got this done, I have nothing in my system but just test, just EQ. I didn't add in any, any no osterine, nothing. I did all that after the blood work. So this was just EQ, just test. So I'm running, at, on this blood work, I'm running 800 plus, so a little more, maybe like 840, 850 milligrams of EQ a week and 250 milligrams of test a week. And uh, yeah, I'll put it on the screen. Very interesting. This is kind of why I wanted to test this shit out. You know what I mean? Um, my estrone, which is the E1, was way high, way up out of range. And no one ever gets this tested, but I do remember reading some, some past studies saying that the EQ aromatizes into E1, which is estrone, and it does. So if we look, I'm pulling, what, 662? picograms per milliliter and the, and the top of the reference range is 65 so it's like 10, 10 times plus um, estrone reading and then if we look at my E2 it's undetectable and this is a sensitive test by estradiol so or, or E2 it's sensitive E2 so it's the best test you can get most accurate so there's no false reading on the E2 less than 2.5 and um, if anybody knows anything about E2 that's bad, you don't want it that crashed. Um, so let's talk about it. Uh, I mean, and I mean, we'll go over that. The testosterone is good for my thing, it's 1431, so looking good on 250 dose. It was, it'll probably creep up a little bit as, the, as it saturates, but right around that range. So yeah, I mean, this is why I wanted to test this. Um, nobody talks about it, nobody ever tests their, their E1. What I would like to do now is get a sensitive E1, um, which costs another like 60, 70 bucks. And then you got the test E1S, which is est estrone sulfate as well, if you really want to get an accurate reading. But right now I'm unemployed because of this coronavirus. I was a personal trainer and 
got no job, so I can't afford to get a $60 E1 blood test. The, what that would solve is the E1 could have a false reading because it's not a sensitive test. So it could be elevated because the, um, the EQ is giving it a false reading. And uh, that's a possibility. Or it's aromatizing into estrone. So I don't know. I don't feel comfortable having my estrone in that range and my E2 that low. Estrone, I did some research. There, there's a lot of conflicting stuff. It's very unknown, your E1. So, I mean, I don't feel comfortable having it that and my E2 that low. So, because E1 is so unknown, it's technically at 4% as estrogenic as E2. And, I mean, if you did the math on that, that's not even, that's barely going to be estrogenic at all, even at that high of a reading. But it's such an it's unstudied about like having high, high estrone levels and I know that E2 has definite they, they hit different receptors and they have different binding affinities for these estrogen receptors so I know E2 is going to have some protective effects I know it has neuroprotective effects I don't know if E1 has that um, and the E2 is it has many functions in the body and your body's used to having that um, the estrone, on the other hand, way less studied, way less known about how the aromatase inhibitors affect it and things like that. So with all that, it kind of explains the way I was feeling. I was kind of explaining I was having like a low estrogen feeling. Totally explains it. Um, I think what I would do now if I was able to keep working out and keep the cycle going is balance the test to EQ to like a one to one or at least like a two to three test to EQ ratio, more likely a one to one, because I want my E2 in a normal range because there's, I know for sure that your estrone is supposed to, it, it's like a, um, what's called a precursor or, or a, a pro-hormone into E2, so it's blocking that. The, e, the EQ has a AI effect, an anti-aromatase, uh, it has an aromatase inhibiting effect where it's killing the enzyme. So having the E1 that high, not natural, um, this could explain why people feel a certain way on EQ, like hunger, because um, I know the estrone is produced in the fat cells, so it could be causing the EQ hunger and like kind of the EQ mental anxiety and unease, is having that low of a E2 rating and that high of an E1 rating. Um, I would love to get an E1 sensitive test, but I cannot afford it because, as I said, I'm unemployed. So we'll have to postpone the cycle and see what goes on. But when I continue it, I'm going to balance the EQ to test, just in, or or unless I can get, I'll, I'll I'll probably I'll balance the EQ and test one to one, and then I will get a further test with estrone sensitive um, they they will uh, that'll neg negate any kind of um, false readings or anything like that so that's what I'll do next just because I don't feel comfortable having that that kind of range um, I don't know it just doesn't seem right because it's so unknown and stuff so this kind of goes to show hopefully this can help some of y'all out and it goes over like what's uh, what EQ does so yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll keep you all updated, I hope. Uh, I'll try to make a video on something. I, I want to have this channel go into other stuff. Um, symmetry and fitness is supposed to be like a whole, you know, a whole thing, but I'm kind of trying to enter into the sphere of um, what I'm currently doing and then transition into some other stuff. So right now, all, I'm really do, all I got going really that I can hit to show you guys is the gym and um, the cycling of EQ. So hopefully this answers some questions. I don't know if y'all want to talk about it or whatever. I know I don't have too many viewers, but the ones that do, if you have any similar like th some experiences with EQ, let me know. It's just uh, kind of weird. So yeah, I know most cycles online will have the EQ balance, and it's usually like a one-to-one -one or close to it. So. Maybe they're right. 
Um, I just don't feel comfortable having my E2 that low because I know that there's certain things in the body that it has to do and I don't feel comfortable having my E1 that high because I know that it's an unknown, it's an unknown thing and if you need to lower your estrone, um, I mean we don't know if the uh, aromatase inhibitors really how they work on um, lowering it. So with that said, you know, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll, I'll try to find a place to work out and um, get it going. Because, uh, you know, we got this coronavirus going on, so we'll see. And I gotta get a job to make sure I can pay rent in a couple weeks. But yeah, um, hopefully this helped you guys out and I can afford to get an Estrone uh, sensitive test in the future when I have a cycle going. Um, and yeah, it was just getting good. That Osterin was perfect. I had it at 20 milligrams. Um, vascularity was kicking in. It was starting to get good, and I was going to see this test, and I would have probably balanced out the EQ to test ratio, and I would have probably felt a little better too, you know? So, man, uh, subscribe to help me out, you know, just to... Uh, keep my viewers up I'll try to figure out some sort of workout and some sort of report to get going um, other than that if you guys watched it this far thank you for watching and talk to me below later guys